So my name is David Terra. Uh, I run a little company called D2C. And what you see there are lots of technology trade organizations that I do some stuff with. And um, where my blog is, and I was, I'm at DT on Twitter, which tells you that I was kind of early on in the social media space. Before I start, I'm just going to ask a social media type question. Am I right in assuming you're all on Facebook? Hands up, who's on Facebook? Right, good. Who's on Tumblr? Yeah, good, couple there. This is my Tumblr, you can come and stalk an old bloke. Yeah. Uh, right, who uses Snapchat? Cool, okay, good. I have a bit of a challenge today, because I've got to sell you the idea of coming and get a job in the technology industry, in, in computing and IT and technology. And I'm going to try and tell you why it's exciting, why it's important, and why it could help you find your element. And I'll explain what that means when I get to the end. But I'm going to try and kind of make it exciting by giving you a bit of a history lesson of where we're at in IT. So, don't tell anyone, but the first time I touched a computer, it was with one of these things. Um, because then we interacted with computers with these things called punched cards. This is an IBM 029 card punch. I was writing Fortran programs at university, feeding stuff into a mainframe that was in a back room somewhere, because then, back then computers were big. But the cool people, and this is, that, that was the, the mid-70s. Uh, the cool people in the late 70s started using these things. Any, anyone know what this is? Right. Oh, one does. That, this is the Apple II. This is the little device that Steve Jobs and, and uh, Wozniak made, made their company called Apple a billion dollar business. So they started in a back room doing stuff. They came out with this, and this is what really took off as a personal computer. I came out of university, I, I happened to go straight into um, a company called IBM. Big technology company, didn't really know who I was going to work for, didn't realize it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it set, it set me on this journey. And in 1981, they announced this thing, which is the IBM personal computer. And that's the thing that really kind of changed the business landscape for computers. All of a sudden, instead of weird terminals connected to big computers, people had computers on their desks. And that's what started the journey to everyone carrying around stuff. Interesting. What about this World Wide Web thing? Well, has anyone noticed this year there's been all sorts of things about it being 20 years old? Yeah? Anyone noticed that? You did. Thank God. Yes. But my guess is there's probably a few of, you in the, few of you in the audience that aren't 20 years old yet. Am I right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, good. There's a very young one there. Good. Well, actually, this fella, Tim Berners-Lee, who's a Brit, actually invented this thing back in March 89. He put together a, a proposal for what it was going to be when he was working at CERN in the, uh, doing interesting physics stuff, which actually is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a, a, a pure a pure physicist working at the, the CERN cyclotron until I realized the maths was too difficult, and so I went in a different direction. The first web page went up August 91 at CERN, and they've actually preserved that first web page. Uh, but people talk about it being 20 years old because actually it's 30th of, of April 93 that CERN opened up the technology so that everybody could use it free. And suddenly, this kind of backroom technology thing, which was all for sharing research between universities and, and researchers, suddenly became something we could all use. And that shift to making it open turned it into something that changed the world. So I guess in the mid to late 90s, companies like mine you know, jumped on board and put themselves a, got themselves a website. Everyone started using the, the, web, the, the web commercially. Um, a little company called Google was founded in 1998. That's a significant little milestone. Um, at the turn of the last century, 1999 to 2001, people talk about the dot-com uh, boom and bust. Anyone heard about that? Not many? Well, there was a big bubble of uh, technology companies and then a big crash. But it sort of started what's happening now. From 2002 to now, um, 
the web, rather than being just a place to publish stuff, has suddenly become interactive. And when I asked you those questions about, about Twitter and Tumblr and all that kind of stuff, and forgot to ask if anyone was on Twitter, is anyone on Twitter? Cool, there we go, okay, good stuff. Um, it's all got interactive, and, and really that's, that's where we are now, and that's why it's exciting. Now, this is one of my favorite books. Has anyone read Douglas Adams' Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency? You know, he wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy stuff. If you haven't read them, you've got to, because they're really funny and they're really good. But Dirk Gently is a holistic detective, um, believing in the fundamental interconnectedness of all things. And actually, that's a really important thing, because I've been in IT for 35 years, and every few years, something comes along to change things, like uh, the guys at Apple coming up with the Apple II, like IBM coming up with a personal computer. And there have been various other kind of technology shifts that have happened that have been a big deal and have, and have changed the world of IT. At the moment, we have three of them happening simultaneously. And we've never had three of these technology shifts happening simultaneously before. So the time now is different. It's the most exciting time in the technology world because of what's going on. The, the cloud one over up, up on the top left is cloud stuff, web stuff. It's the fact that now you don't actually have to um, have stuff on a computer, you can access it through the web and uh, do amazing things. So cloud apps, web apps, really important shift in the way of doing business because you can just, you don't have to host stuff with your own data center and your own computers, you rent it from someone else who's an expert at it. But at the same time as that, we've got the shift to social. We've got the fact that in the last 10 years, all of a sudden, we are involved. All of a sudden, we are actually using Twitter for messaging. We're actually um, we're buying books on, Am uh, on Amazon, but we're writing reviews and telling people whether we like them or we don't. Suddenly, the whole web has, uh, has got us interactive. And at the same time as that, we are walking around with things like this. Who's got a smartphone? OK, fair percentage. I'm sure, I'm sure someone will buy one for you soon. But we're walking around with the internet in our hands. We can all access the internet from one of these things. We can actually do it on the go. We can get to it anywhere. Suddenly, that changes everything. What it means is that as well as us having fun and doing things on Twitter and Tumblr and finding out about um, um, interesting celebrities and you know, what's, uh, what's place and status doing, or you know, whatever it might be, um, it's changing business. Everybody's business model, whether they like it or not, is under threat and changing. So suddenly, if your water owns the bookseller, there's this outfit called Amazon who sells books real cheap. If you're in the, uh, the, the, the TV business, suddenly um, I can get to Netflix on the web. Um, it doesn't matter what business you're in, new technology is going to be used by somebody to do something that you're doing better, faster, cheaper, and unless you actually start thinking about that, you've got a problem. So this is a big deal for business. Now, can I beat that? Facebook, that, we're, that most of us are on, started in 2004. So that's within the lifetime of most of the people here. YouTube, 2005. Twitter started in 2006. Uh, actually, it's it started as an idea and some of us got on board. It actually only became a real company in September 2007. Tumblr started in 2007. Pinterest, anyone, anyone use Pinterest? No, okay, never mind. Instagram, anyone use Instagram? Cool, now, Instagram's a real good case in point. 2010, a couple of guys think we've got a good idea here. We can actually put, very simple idea. I'm gonna uh, make it easy to take photographs on my smartphone and share them. Real simple idea. They do it well, they make it easy. Um, over 18 months, their company grows to 13 people, which is amazing. Actually, no, the amazing thing is that when it grew to 13 people, it was bought by Facebook for a billion dollars. A billion dollars. So they started something, 18 months, grew their company to 13 people, but they sold it for, for a billion dollars. They'd never made a profit. They didn't have a clue how they were gonna make a profit. 
that's how business has changed. If you're an old style business person like me, you have to completely rebalance the way that you're doing things because life is different. Now, I can go get stuff for free on the internet. There's lots of services that we're all using for free. How does that get paid for? Well, actually, it usually gets paid for because you've become the product. Because while you're using that product, you're, what you're doing is being analyzed and that data is useful to someone. But the business world has changed dramatically. 2007, this thing that I've got on the floor that's telling me whether I'm overrunning on time or not, an iPhone, comes out. We had, we had smartphones before. Some of us had Blackberries. Some of that thing changed the world. Suddenly, f smartphones got easier. Everybody started to get them. iPad, it's only been out since 2010. How many tablets you know, around, around, you know, around in use, in, in your school, in business? It's amazing. And those two things are, are really why the mobile bit comes into play in my three big shifts. Now, I'm not going to play this video, but there's this brilliant video on YouTube. This guy has taken a, a, a video of his, of his um, I think he's, she's about 18 months old, his daughter, and she's playing on an iPad, and then he gives her a magazine. And in the magazine, she goes to the pictures, and she's trying to squirt, move the pictures. She's pressing, and she's wondering, why is this magazine broken? Why is this magazine broken? That's the world we're living in now. It's, it's dramatic. You know, a lot of these things that we're using happened only in your lifetime. The kids of today that are two and three and four are growing up with this, and it's going to be natural to them. So it's just amazing. So this, this big shift to the three things, really important. Um, changes everything, changes everyone's business model. It's used for, for good, for business, but it's also used for changing the world. Here's a few pictures of the Arab Spring. Yeah? In some of the countries like Libya and Egypt and the like. That's, that's revolution happening, facilitated by this thing. So, technology is exciting. Technology is changing the world. And it's an exciting place to be. Now, what next for technology? It's quite amazing. Anyone heard of the Internet of Things? No? OK. Basically, what's coming next is that every device, every thing, is going to have some intelligence in it. We're going to be able to track things with our RFID tags. Um, you know, your fridge will figure out what's inside of it and tell you what you need to buy or what you could make from the contents. All that kind of technology is only, only a couple of years away. And everything, I mean, uh, uh, many of the car manufacturers are now actually selling cars with intelligence in them so that they communicate with the, uh, with, with, with the garage when they've got a fault, that kind of thing. It, there are, there's prototypes of it now. It's, it's only a couple of years away. Fascinating. 3D printing. Have, you, have you, any, any of you seen 3D printing? Yeah, a few of you have. That is really crucial. You've got organizations now making prototypes and things with, with 3D printing. But again, we're only a few years away from actually being able to make almost anything with 3D printing. Now, I can't guess whether we're five years away or 10 years away from that. But when that happens, suddenly the world's supply chain is different. Because instead of having to make stuff in China, I can print another one on my 3D printer. So it's got huge ramifications for the way things are going to happen. Fascinating. Nanotechnology. Not just in the science fiction uh, TV series. It's not just on Star Trek or whatever. Um, it's happening. The, we're probably only 10, 15, 20 years away from amazing things whereby the intelligence of the human brain will be, will be surpassed by what we can do with computers. That's going to change things. So this rate of change. So, so I've lived through all sorts of shifts in my time in IT, but the rate of change has slowly got faster. And over the last five years, it's just got faster again. I haven't got a clue what happens next. Next five years, if, you, if, if anyone tells you they can predict what's going to happen in the next five years, sorry, they need their head examined because it's really difficult. So technology is very exciting. Now, why the hell is it important? Good question. Well, 
I saw this on a tweet. So I'm, um, I, may, I imagine there's a few music fans in the audience. Hands up, yep. Lots of, lots of music fans. My guess is there are a few less jazz fans in the audience. Am I right? Oh, we've got, yeah, good, good stuff, good stuff. So just, I'm, I happen to be a big jazz fan. Um, these are American numbers. The jazz, seg the jazz se uh, segment of the record industry, it's a hundred million dollar a year, year business. That's quite something. Grand Theft Auto V sold $800 million worth in its first 24 hours. That puts into context how big the gaming industry is. And that's just one segment of the technology world. Who's this fella? Can anyone tell me who this fella is? You don't know Vince Cable. Vince Cable is our business secretary in the government. And he's actually the best one we've had for years. I am biased, I really love the guy. Um, go away. This, this organization was, was relaunched last week. It used to be called Intellect, we changed the name to Tech UK. He was at the launch, and a couple of the things he said. The, the technology industry in the UK, is it something I said? Never mind. Tell your friends. Um, 1.3 million jobs in the UK. So actually, it's quite a big sector. It's actually um, something like about 10% of, of GDP, but it's growing to 12%, so it's quite a big sector. Um, what he was surprised by, and what I was surprised by, is if you take the G7 countries, including America, who's the biggest exporter of technology? It's the UK. So it's actually big business for our country. That's why it's important. Now, another thing is, what, why should it be important to you guys in terms of thinking, a job, thinking of a job? There's some really interesting research from the National Institute of Economic Social Research came out a few months ago. It, that 1.3 million jobs equates to 270,000 companies in the UK digital economy. It's actually, the thing is that those digital companies are growing 25% faster than the rest. They are employing, on average, it's 15% more, but let's say, take an average size company, they're employing three more people a year than the rest. So if you go into this sector, it's the fastest growing sector, your job's probably gonna be safer because it's growing. It's no longer the sole pervert serve of just startups and software companies. Um, this technology stuff is actually in every single business. It doesn't matter what you do, you're using more and more technology as part of the delivery mechanism for whatever it is you do. So, so that's, that's why it's exciting and that's why it's important. I'm now gonna go through a few options of, of where you might go, what you might do. So there's a complete range of stuff you could get involved with in the technology world. You know, if you're interested in games, you could go work for a games company. Um, there's lots of technology stuff like IBM, Microsoft, Google, Amazon. The interesting thing here is a company like Google, only been going since 89, a company like Amazon is a bookseller. They, they, they were selling books. In terms of actually uh, doing what they did, they had to put together a lot of technology to do the, the logistics and the supply chain stuff and their e-commerce website. In doing that, they learned about technology and they thought, hey, this is good, we can sell it. Suddenly, they've become one of the major technology companies around the world. Fascinating. But also, there's, there's loads of them. One of the things that happens here is that um, Darwin's theory of evolution holds true in that categories like species divide. So there's loads and loads of companies doing loads and loads of things. And part of the interesting thing about the way this big shift of cloud, social, and mobile is changing business is that the barrier to entry for any of us to start a company and start doing stuff is dramatically reduced. It's much easier to start your own company and do your own thing today than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Hence, lots of small companies, and that's good. So, the other side of what are the options, not the companies you could go look at, but the kind of work that's involved, it's not just about programming and engineering. Actually, art is quite important in this technology world because um, 
I've got to design my website, my application, design the user experience. I've got to design the product. Actually, all of that kind of uh, artistic thinking down into the product is crucially important. It's one of the reasons why Apple is so successful, because their stuff is designed better than anyone else's. That's why it's not just engineering and technology skills in school, it's art and stuff that's actually really useful in the technology world. Writing, we've got to communicate with people. If you're, if you're a good communicator, if you're a good writer, in the technology business, we need you, because we need you to write our manuals, to write our websites, to, to make our message clear. It's all about communication. So all of, the, all of the jobs from support training, documentation, there's lots of different types of jobs. So within a technology company, it's not just about programming. There's a whole raft of stuff which you, can, which you might have the skills to do. Give it a serious think. So loads of, loads of jobs, loads of skills, loads of jobs uh, uh, potentially available. So, all that sounds good. Here's the, here's the element bit. This old fella is a very famous American economist called Dr. Paul Samuelson. And he said, never underestimate the vital importance of finding early in life the work for you is play. This turns possible underachievers into happy warriors. Put another way, there's a brilliant book by one, another of my heroes called Sir Ken Robinson who was on Desert Island Discs last week, but that's an aside. But um, this book is all about saying, basically, find what you're passionate about, find what you enjoy, find what's your hobby, turn that into what you do for a job, and then you'll enjoy it. Don't just choose a job, find what you enjoy, and turn that into your job. Now, the other thing that he says in the book that's very important is that, is that you know, we humans, um, and, and this approach, we're organic, and we're cyclic. We might not get it right the first time. And one of the interesting things about the, about the business world now, and, and the landscape is that um, I, when I was brought up, I was expecting to maybe work for two or three companies in my life. Today, kids are gonna work for many more organizations than that because of the nature of the way the world has changed, because of the nature of business. So you, you might end up working for 10 different organizations or more than that. That isn't a problem. It's just the fact that the world's different. And actually, you might not find the right one first time, but maybe on the second or the third or the fourth one, you'll find the thing that you really enjoy, and that will be where your career heads to. Really, really important. So if nothing else, do what you enjoy. So here's a few practical things. Uh, was anyone here for the IBM guy with the, with the apprenticeships? No? OK, never mind. Um, Obviously, when it comes to things like college courses and apprenticeships and university degrees and that kind of thing, you can find out all about that from your, from your schools and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that as a given. What I think you should do is experiment. There's loads of free resources out there on the web. If you want to find out about programming, if you want to teach yourself programming, it's free to go try do it. Just Google's your friend you'll find free resources. There's all sorts of stuff you can, you can try out. Things, things like um, Adobe Photoshop, if I want to get into, into design, I don't have to buy the product anymore, I can actually uh, use free versions of it. Um, look out for local code clubs, make a meetups, hack a days in your area. There's lots of uh, weird people who do, who do weird stuff, and if you get beyond the fact that they're weird, they're actually doing good stuff that might be interesting, go find out. Go, go, go track down one of those. Research the local tech companies in your, in your area. I've actually found that there's some pretty amazing software companies that are right near to me that I never realized were there. Do some research, go talk to them. Consider asking about an internship. You need some experience to get a job. Go offer your, your services to someone for, for free for three months. A business person like me doesn't necessarily think about things like that. Someone knocks on my door and says, hey, can I, can I help? I quite, I'm quite likely to say, actually, that would be really good. So talk to people. Um, the other really important thing is think about starting something yourself. Actually, starting up, you know, you, um, I was listening to a guy called Richard Griffiths, I think his name is, on the radio on the way in here, um, a Welsh guy, uh, millionaire. Um, kind of from uh, Swansea area, poor education, 
uh, but he, he had an ambition to, do, to run his own business. So instead of working on the dairy farm and following the footsteps of his father and mother, he did his own thing. And today, that, you know, actually doing your own thing, starting your own business, maybe you do it as a hobby, as a sideline, just to test it out while you're doing something else. If it's what you're passionate about, it could well succeed. Try it. And actually, one of the important things that Sir Ken Robinson and others will tell you is, don't be afraid of failure. The first two or three times you do this, you'll probably screw it up. And for every one of those mistakes, you'll have learned something from them. So try things out. Don't worry about screwing it up, because failure is part of the journey towards success. You have to, you have to fail a few times before you get successful. Really important. Use the web. There's this brilliant resource, all sorts of stuff you can find out about it. And um, the other thing is, don't be afraid to ask questions out there. There are all sorts of communities out there where you can just go on and ask, and you'll be amazed to find out that there are lots of people like me who are more than happy to actually give you help, give you advice, and do it for free because we love it. So. Um, this, anyone heard of SlideShare? Oh, one has. Uh, there's a thing called SlideShare where you can store these kind of presentations and share them. So if you wanted this presentation, if you Google David Terra and SlideShare, you'll find it because it'll be the latest one I put up this morning. So if you want to use these slides, you can borrow them. And that's all the photo sources, and that's me, and thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Wait, 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 for, wait for a microphone so we can hear you. Yeah, hello. Uh, basically, say like someone who has no business background, yeah? Yep. How would you be able to get involved in this kind of world? Well, you know, um, it, it's tricky, but you've just got to, um, I mean, you've got to look at what you're good at. What, you know, th there are going to be hobbies and things that you're good at. Say like for me, yeah, I'm, I'm good at maths and I'm good at com with computers. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, that's great. I mean, and whether you kind of go and down I'm, the and programming I'm a good route, smooth talker too. I mean, the thing is, whether you go down the program route, route or the technical support route or whatever, because you've got that kind of uh, you know analytic mind. Um, the business thing is quite intriguing, because there are an awful lot of people out there who tell you how difficult it is, but actually, it's, it's all not. common sense. Yeah. If you've I've got good common, that. if you've got common sense, you'll go on well in business, because you know. Uh, all of the successful business people, all they've done is applied common sense and learned as you go. And the whole thing about this is trying things out and learning as you go. You learn by doing. So just go at it. But then, but then again, yeah. say like, because obviously me, I didn't have the chances to. So where can I find like, say like I need someone to invest in, in, in me. Where can I find? It's, it's difficult. I mean, from that point of view, you've got, you've got to kind of... Because I have a business plan yeah, yeah. And, I have, and I have everything uh, like my plan is sorted out yeah. it's just i need someone to be able to invest in me okay. and i have i don't have the money to like make my dream come true what? Yeah. two things a you've got to talk to a lot of people i've run out of time and 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 b there are things like kickstarter so there's a crowdsourced thing for funding ideas you put your idea up on kickstarter and people will invest in it so so there are, there are avenues apparently i've run out of time i enjoyed talking to you thank you very much